Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is 7 a.m. on the 18th of October. Wow. And that means at 7 a.m. Monday through Friday, we have a conversation, an interactive conversation, but not just a conversation, a principle of putting God first in our day. Hopefully you had some time where you were with um, either online or in a building with um, some other folks who are trying to be the church <laughs> and yesterday hopefully you had some time yesterday and and if you're doing small groups with us hopefully you met sometime between Friday and Sunday to go over this week six you guys week six can you believe it hey Neil Hedges happy birthday bud the big 4-0 welcome to the club right <clears throat> those pictures were stellar <laughs> that was awesome Okay, hope you're having a great birthday. Everybody tell Neil Hedges happy birthday. <clears throat> anyway, um, 7 a.m., like I said, on the 18th of October, and we are wrapping up Kingdom Disciples. Kingdom Disciples. This is the last week. Have y'all enjoyed it? Give a hashtag yep, yep. Um, we are going to jump right in this morning um, to conclude... Um, the first day of the last week. This is crazy. I can't believe it's already been six weeks. Can y'all? Okay, so if you're a first time guest, hashtag first time guest. We'll make it real easy for us at 7 a.m. when it's still partially dark outside. Man, I'm telling you, that, that alarm going off in the morning and it's still dark outside does not work with my body. I'm over here trying to get my coffee in me as fast as I possibly can. Um, if you are a regular hashtag regular all right shall we get ready or shall we begin I think we should be ready already all right so we're gonna start if you've got your book on 138 if you don't it's fine just hang in there with us because I feel like he's made it in such a way that these are kind of standalone that we can we don't have to necessarily have a book it's great to have a book especially if you're a visual learner like I am and you want to read it and not have it read to you. I'm just, don't absorb as much information if, if content is being read to me. If it's being read, I gotta see it too at the same time. Hey, you know, you learn this about yourself. Your, your education experience, even into adulthood, is much better if you learn what kind of learner you are. That was free. <laughs> All right, here we go. Kingdom Disciples Together. As we've discovered, discipleship is the growth process by which Christians learn to bring all of life under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. This growth doesn't happen overnight, even though your salvation is complete the moment you trust Christ for salvation. Becoming a disciple is a lifelong process. So some of y'all need to hear that and don't get so beat up, beating up on yourself, you know, because, well, I'm not as far as I should be and, well, you know what? It's a lifelong process. It really is. It's gonna take. It's gonna take a little while for us to to get where we are looking like Jesus. Amen. Okay, but it's also a process that shouldn't stop you. See there. That's why discipleship includes a development process in the local church by which Christians are taken from spiritual infancy to spiritual maturity, so that they can reproduce the discipleship process with others. That's what this is all about, you guys. Learning to become and in the process of becoming a disciple while also helping others to do the same. The Bible calls this process being conformed to the image of God's Son, Romans 8, 29. In other words, the process of discipleship by which believers become Christ-like is designed to be repeated again and again until Jesus has many brothers and sisters who look like him. The local church is one of the primary locations where this discipling process occurs. You and I can't participate in this process if we're living as isolated Christians. Wow. God placed us in a body of people called the church so that together we can accomplish the mission of dis discipling other believers. The church is God's place to produce disciples who will then influence our communities. As kingdom disciples think talk and act like Jesus, the world is influenced as well. 
As we finish our time studying the overarching comprehensive role of discipleship in the lives of believers, let's look at how discipleship is to be carried out in the local church, what your part is in that process, and how discipleship can affect a community. All right, y'all still there? Hashtag I'm here. If you haven't shared this out, please do so. I'd appreciate it. And, um, you know, let folks know that they're welcome if you haven't already done your hearts and your likes. Right now would be a great time to do that as I read this next little top part. All right. 139 says, do you enjoy microwave popcorn? It literally is something we could buy 50 bags of and not, la it not last very long. We have to buy the big, huge boxes of it at our house. It's really ridiculous how much popcorn we consume at the Bell household. Um, so our answer to that is yes, we enjoy microwave popcorn, but I like it on the stovetop too, particularly while watching a good movie or a football game. What always amazes me about popcorn is the complete transformation of once hard, coarse seeds into soft, delectable puffs of popcorn. This metamorphosis occurs because the microwave heats the moisture inside every seed until it turns to steam. Once the moisture becomes steam, the pressure becomes so great that the shell can no longer contain it, and an explosion occurs. What was once inedible and indigestible is now tasty, edible, and delicious. Environment is everything. When the microwave performs its intended function, the seeds of corn are transformed. What a microwave is to popcorn, the local church is to Christians' growth as kingdom disciples. The local church is the context and environment God has created to transform Christians into what we were created and redeemed to be fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. Hmm, what does that sound like? To become and lead others to become, say it with me, fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. That is, that is Crosspoint's mission statement. That's our, our purpose, to become and lead others to become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. Now, we are going to have a few verses right here real quick. Matthew 16, 18 through 19. And what we're supposed to do is to read these following. If you've already read these and you already have a way you've summarized them, um, as far as how it applies to the local church, just put that down here in the comments or here in the comments, however that works. Um, when you play it back, it's never where I should have pointed. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, Matthew 16, 18 through 19 says... If I could just see. Am I reading the right thing? Yes, yeah, 16, 18 through 19. Now I stand, no, now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not, um, will not conquer it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid or whatever you bind on earth will be forbidden or bound in heaven and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. So what is what is the answer to the question here? Write that down below. How does this verse apply to the local church? Um just some thoughts that I had were um the powers will not over prevail over the church. We have powers. Um whatever we rebuke on earth or forbid whatever we permit. So we have that power. We have that, um, that ability to lock it down or to open it up. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, the next verse was Ephesians 1, through 23. And it's talking about, it says, God has put all things under the authority of Christ, which we talked about early in this, in this session, not this session, this, um, series this study there's the word i told y'all i wasn't quite awake um god has put all things under the authority of christ and has made him head over all things say all things hashtag all things for the benefit of the church for what benefit for the church's benefit and the church is his body we know that right it is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere. Hashtag airware. You can put a V in there if you want to or not. Everywhere with himself. Who fills all things everywhere with himself. 
Okay, so what do we what do we gather there as a summary? That Christ has what? Authority over all things. We said that. Hashtag all things. And does so for the church. It's for the church's purpose, right? Because what does a good groom do? He, he, he is thinking about his bride, right? And so he is, we are the bride of Christ. We are the church. He laid his, down, his life down for us. Okay, Ephesians 3.10 says, God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom. What? God's purpose in all of this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. So, I think you heard with my um, inflection there that the emphasis was uh, to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety. Um, so, we are to display God's wisdom. The wisdom. You know, you ever been around somebody that's just so wise and you're like, wow, where do you get your wisdom from? Well, you know, then you need to, to ask yourself if it's not already obvious, are they a follower of Christ? Because I can assure you if they are really trying to be a follower of Christ and conform to the image of Jesus, then that they're getting most of their wisdom from that. <laughs> Some of it from from learn, you know, evaluated experience probably too. <laughs> First Timothy 3, 14 and 15 is the final verse on this page on 139. And it says, I'm writing these things to you now, even though I hope to be with you soon. I hope I'm in the right spot. Yes. Okay. So that if I am delayed, you will know how people must conduct themselves in the household of God. This is the church of the living God, which is the pillar and foundation of the truth. Who's the truth? Jesus. Okay, so how do we conduct ourselves? This is teaching us to conduct ourselves. We are to conduct ourselves in a, a set-apart kind of way, a different way, a one that is governed by the kingdom principles that God has given us. And what, is it, what does Tony go on to say here? Since we're on a first name basis, I laugh about that every time I do that. But um, Dr. Evans goes on and says, A kingdom church is a group of believers who covenant together or make a promise to disciple their members in order to model and transfer heaven's values in history. To model, to show them off, to um, exhibit them. To tra and transfer to from one place to another, not leaving it the fir the former place behind. We move it all over, right? We transfer those values. So I love this analogy, and I need to like chew on it a little bit longer, you know, um, because I feel like there's more of it that I could get out of it personally. But I love that he says, and he said this in um, the video. Um, you know, his video teaching yesterday when we met with our small group. Um, hey, online folks, if you're there. Like a foreign embassy the that officially represents the homeland, the church is to serve as God's embassy on earth that represents heaven. An embassy is a location in a foreign land where the laws and regulations of the homeland apply. It's a little bit of the home country a long way from home. I always think of one of those like action movies with, that involves the CIA or something where they're over in, in you know, a European country somewhere and um, they're running from somebody important or somebody bad in a European country and um, or somewhere other than the U.S. Let's say it's a U.S. person trying to get to the embassy and um, they always scream out. What do they scream out if you've ever watched, if you watch action movies like I do? Um, I'm a U.S. citizen. I'm a U.S. citizen, right? Open up, I'm a, I'm a U.S. citizen. You know, they're always like announcing that they are from the U.S. and they're trying to gain access to the rules and the um, rights that they are awarded or afforded to them because they are a U.S. citizen, right? They are not governed by the rules where they are actually at they are governed by the rules from where they are from. Ooh, did y'all hear that? 
They're not governed by the rules of where they live. They are governed by the rules and the rights. They are privileged with the rights of their homeland, where they are from. So how is this concept of an embassy similar to the way the church is to represent the kingdom of God? I think I'm just putting it here, but what do y'all think? Like put that down in your in your comments. How is this a con how is the concept of an embassy similar to the way the church is to represent the kingdom of God? We're the body of church, uh, the, within the body of the church, we are the body of Christ, right? The church is not a building, and we've gotten that so mixed up. Yes, we meet in a building, or maybe we meet online, but it's a gathering of like-minded people. What did he say? What was the, the thing he said? A group of believers who covenant together to disciple their members in order to model and transfer heaven's values and history. Well, when it comes to the embassy, I always think of we are a piece of the homeland, right? We are kind of just stuck down into this world, even though we're not of the world. We're in the world. So we're like down in the world, right? Within this little safe haven, but we're not of the world, right? So, um... I wrote, the rules and rights as a citizen are available and required of us. You know, our, if we are the embassy, the, the, the foreign embassy, the, um, what's his name? Like a foreign embassy, right. An official, the embassy, the ambassador, that's the word I'm looking for. The ambassador of the embassy, he represents our country when he is in foreign soil, right? He is... I guess for lack of a better uh, word or a comparison here, you've got a governor of a portion of the U.S., right? When you uh, go into a foreign, you know, a U.S. embassy in a for on foreign soil, you have the ambassador there. Well, guys, we are an ambassador for the kingdom of God in foreign soil because let's be real. Once you become a, you've asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, and you have him as your savior, you are now trying to become a disciple and you are trying to be, um, become more like Christ. <coughs> <coughs> and when we do that, we represent as a, an official, as an ambassador for Christ, right? We are his representative. So what we do directly represents Christ. Okay. Anyway, I think I've spent enough time on that, but I'm going to spend a lot of time just, you know, chewing on that in my brain, letting that marinate. Um, how is the con? Okay, hold on. How does your church, wherever you go to church, whether it's Cross Point or another church, how does your church reflect God's values in all it does? In what ways could your church reflect them more clearly? And what did I say earlier? What's CPs, Cross Points? What's cro what's Cross Points? Um, purpose to become and lead others to become fully devoted followers of Christ. A fo fully devoted follower of Christ, a follower. That's the definition, the simple definition of a disciple is a follower. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to be a follower of Christ. Amen? So, I wrote um, to continue to be salt and light to a bitter and dark world. Right? Um, we are to be salt, to give flavor, to preserve the light, um, to um, guide people to truth, not by our um, abilities, but because we have the Holy Spirit inside of us who reminds us of all things and guides us into all truth and teaches us about things that are to come, right? Well, the purpose of every local body of believers is to become a kingdom church making kingdom disciples who are having a kingdom impact individually and corporately in the world. Guys, you know, he was talking about yesterday, Dr. Evans was talking about being in the huddle. We want to check off this box that is, I've been to church. If, if you are a follower of Christ, you are the church. You can't escape it. You don't just get to come. It's not like going and getting a cup of coffee. I've, got, I've had my coffee for the day. No, I've been to church for the week. It's not that. You are the church, and you are the representative. I don't think we take it as seriously as we ought to, and I'm talking to myself as I'm talking with you guys as well. 
um, we have who are having a kingdom impact individually and corporately. Hey, look, if we're doing it individually, it's going to naturally do it corporately because we're going to take it into the actual building or within the group that we're around. But it has to start with an individual um, impact. In fact, I believe so completely, uh, Tony Evans says, in this goal of the local church that when we founded our church in 1976, that was a good year, wasn't it, Doug? Um, I drafted our mission statement to read, Discipling the church to impact the world. Oh, I love this. I love analogies. If a restaurant isn't producing great food, and we've all been to one, it has failed. No matter how good the building or the kitchen looks or how cool the environment is, because what the restaurant, listen to this, what the restaurant produces determines its legitimacy. Similarly, if the church isn't producing disciples, it has failed. God's goal is for people to be discipled through his church. And the only proof that people are being discipled is that they're changing into the likeness of Jesus. If they aren't changing and maturing in their spiritual lives, that means the discipleship process isn't occurring. It's obvious when children are physically growing because they demonstrate evidence of change in their height and their weight and ability to care for themselves. Development is taking place as a child grows into an adult. In our spiritual lives, that development is called discipleship. Now, I've been saying every week, probably, that, that discipleship is supposed to be cyclical. We are to constantly have our hand this way, learning from others who are more mature, not necessarily older, more mature in their their walk, their 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 stage of discipleship, that where they're become how they're becoming a Christ follower. And we also have people that are not quite where we are. And it has to be this, you know, um, hand out, our hand up that we're reaching towards and reaching out to, and also hand out who we're trying to reach those and disciple. Well, I don't know enough. Well, you know more than someone else that's not as far along as you, right? If you are teaching, I don't know where this is coming from, but if you are teaching someone how to drive a car and they have never even turned a car on and all you know how to do is turn the car on and put it in reverse, you still know more than they do, right? Because they've never even turned the ignition on, right? If you've got one of those push button ones like I do now, um, yeah, sometimes I end up turning the car off <laughs> before I even get it started because I'm like not putting the, my foot on the on the the uh, accelerator or the brake or whatever. But you don't know that unless you've done it. I had to have somebody show me how to turn the car on, right? Because the only car I'd ever turned on was one that's a key ignition. Anyway, but if you're trying to learn how to use all these other gadgets on our car, I'm going to have to have somebody else show me that because I don't know how to do that yet, right? So I'd have to maybe go to the dealership or get out the manual and learn some more. Are y'all hearing all these, these uh, correlations? I can teach somebody how to start the car. I can teach somebody the things that I do know. But as far as like anything a little bit further beyond my abilities right now, I'm going to have to reach out to someone else to, to, to uh, mentor me, to disciple me. And that's how we do it individually. That's how we do it corporately. We have to be in this cycle because guess what, guys? If we stop doing what someone else did for us, there's not going to be any disciples, right? There's not going to be any more because eventually all of us will go be with the Lord at some point. And what's left? No disciples because we didn't take the time to invest in others as someone invested in us. It's really important. Don't think that you don't know enough. I really feel like that is for somebody out there. Do not think that you don't know enough or that you are just a baby disciple kind of thing. Look, you know more than somebody in the world that doesn't know at all, you know? So don't think of yourself less than. Um, so how is, the, how is your church taking an active role in your discipleship? Are we changing? Are we helping others? I think those are questions that you need to ask. Is, you know, is your church taking an active role in your discipleship? Well, at Crosspoint, I really hope that your answer is yes, because 
leadership is literally doing everything we possibly can. Are y'all still there? I'm not seeing any comments, even though I asked y'all to comment and put your answers down there and everything. <laughs> oh my goodness, I just spilled a little bit of my coffee. And that's a tragedy right there. All right, are we becoming, you know, when you look at the, um, the, the father or the mother of children, you kind of look for the similarities about who they look like. So if we were to take a picture of ourselves and show it to a non-believer, would they be able to see the face of Jesus? Would they see the resemblance? Are we becoming more, do we look more like our father? If we look in the mirror, are we seeing the reflection of Jesus that we're supposed to be? Or are we still looking a lot like ourselves and um, a lot like the world? In our church today, we can get so caught up in programs and structure that we lose sight of the priority of discipleship. Yet all the programs in the world don't matter if they, don't, if they aren't increasing kingdom disciples. That must be the ultimate goal of a church. A church can have a number of moving parts, an established structure, large buildings, and a multitude of programs. But if the Holy Spirit isn't free to lead people in an ongoing process of discipleship, the church itself is actually getting in the way of God's kingdom goals for his body of believers. Churches must focus on discipleship, not just membership. The church must do everything it can to create a large number of people who are prepared and equipped to infiltra infiltrate the culture as visible verbal representatives of the kingdom of God. And if it doesn't, we've allowed what God created to act as an authoritative entity in culture to become little more than a social club. Ouch, right? I mean, we've got to be doing, if what we're doing doesn't look different, then what are we doing? If it doesn't look any different than a social club, are we making an impact? Are we doing anything? Are we becoming more followers of Christ? Are we helping others to become uh, followers of Christ. So it tells us to read Acts 1 through 2. I'm not going to read that right now because it's two chapters. But we, if you've read Acts 1 through 2, you know that, especially in the second, act, uh, second chapter of Acts, that this is where, you know, the Holy Spirit comes and they speak in all the different languages. And um, it says 3,000 were added that day. Um, and so this is where the, the disciples are like, bold and the signs and wonders are happening and you know all of these conversions are happening so what kind of influence was the early church having on the culture huge amazing right um and it goes on it says reads read acts 2 43 and we're running out of time so i'm just trying to kind of give us a little summary here um are many wonders and signs commonly seen in local churches today and in their impact on the community Y'all can put your answers down there. Um, I want to um, answer this next question. Compare the initial local church's freedom to provide for one another in tangible ways with the focus of many local churches today. How can the contemporary church learn from the early church in order to make a greater impact on society? And what they're talking about is where it said that they divided everything among each other. That's what he's talking about right there in Acts. Um, 245. Um, I think at Crosspoint, we try to, to try to meet the needs of other people. We are always thinking and looking, um, how do we as a church not meet the needs of everyone, but how can we meet the needs of some, someone? And that's what we need to think, not just as a body of believers, but as an individual, when we're coming in, and spending that time the other three weeks of the month, but then we go out to impact the community, to impact the lives of others, to take a little bit of Jesus to others. So ask the question, how can I individually be the church by meeting needs of someone? If we would just open our eyes, and I say it all the time, if you've heard me at any length of time or any any point of time I should say um, we have daily opportunities daily not just once a month you have a daily opportunity God gives you daily opportunities we just don't we're just so overly self I don't know that 
some of it might be selfishness, some of it just self-absorbed. We're just only thinking about us and like this is us and everybody else, you know, that we have our own world that we're living in and I don't live in your world, you don't live in my world, you know, and I get that. But at the same time, we've got to have our eyes open. If we are kingdom disciples and we're trying to lead others to become fully devoted followers of Christ, we have the opportunity to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Um, and so we've got to open our eyes and ask daily, you know, Father, show me how I'm, you know, what opportunities you have laid out for me today to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Doug has even said it as, what does love require of me? What, oh man, if I go over there and, and help them, I'm going to be late. Or, oh, if I do this, or I don't know if that's me wanting to do that, or if that's Jesus telling me to do something. You know, it doesn't matter. Are you being salt? Are you being the light? Are you trying to be the hands and feet of Jesus? Do you have an randomly an extra sandwich that you got from the, the you know the local subway and you see somebody that's hungry well do you need two sandwiches no so don't put it in the fridge ask God who you're supposed to give that to because there's a reason why more than likely not just coincidence that you're supposed to give that to somebody you know so anyway I've had that personally happen to me um, so I know that it's true uh, anyway I, I, I don't know why I'm going off on a tangent about that, but it's just like, you know, we have that individual, those individual opportunities. It's not just a Sunday thing that you come. Are you impacting the world that you're, that, that's around you? Are you being the embassy, you know, for the kingdom of heaven, a kingdom of God? And um, we have opportunities every, every single day to make a difference somehow just ask and ask God to open your eyes I promise you'll see it um, this last thing says the early church modeled a spirit of faith couple coupled with a heart of giving that stands out for many churches since that time as a result the impact the Holy Spirit made through the early church was enormous although programs and events are nice returning to a church model that focuses heavily on discipleship would bring about a greater influence in our culture in his word, God has given us the model for the way he designed the church to function. Each kingdom disciple has a responsibility to bring about God's purpose for the church through his or her own individual sphere of influence. Now look at there, I didn't even read that before I read this to y'all. Telling you, you have, you are not insignificant. You are so significant as a follower of Christ that God depends on you to impact those people around you if you see those the mailman the the fedex guy that comes and delivers all your amazon packages the local grocer the cashier that you always see at the store the you know the the lobby the lobby man down front the receptionist in your office wherever you have people in your sphere of influence that you can make an impact on let's pray faithful god thank you for establishing the church to leave a lasting footprint on society You've set the church as a beacon of light in the midst of darkness. I pray that you'll raise up great leaders in the churches across our land and across the world who will emphasize the need for discipleship in all the church does. Help me make an impact for kingdom discipleship in my local church. In Christ's name, amen. Look for the opportunities. It's not, it doesn't have to be big, Sean. Most of the time, it's those small little things. And Lisa Turkhurst said, it's the small little things where Holy Spirit is point, or where God has pointed his Holy Spirit finger over there and said, go and do that. We just got to open our eyes so we don't miss it, you know? Y'all be blessed. Hashtag live, hashtag shared, hashtag recorded, whichever applies to you. Get this out. Guys, we've done it. We are in the final week. It's almost here, the end. We have done it. And, you know, it's always, it always feels good when you've completed something, doesn't it? So, um, join us tomorrow through Friday as we finish up the daily teachings on this, the daily um, workbook um, exercises. And um, don't just let it be information. Allow God to use you. Go be active, right? Amen. Talk to y'all later. Love y'all.